Hey everybody, it's Robbie Bessner, and I'm back with another episode in our Lyme Awareness 2021 series. And it's today I have the most amazing guest that's joining us. Her name is Monty Skull, and she's the executive director for nationalcaplime.org. She'll tell you all about this organization. It's amazing. I think it's one of the original Lyme uh, non-for-profit set setups for you know all of the whole Lyme community have to have a voice, you know, in the legislation in basically Washington D.C., which is the kind of area where they're all located, or at least the organization is domiciled. Monty, you know, basically is a teacher and also an artist by trade. And you can see that in the way that she expresses everything that she does. And more importantly, she has the most exciting program that she's just releasing now. So all you guys out there are getting the first sort of quick peek, sneak peek on, the, on what Lyme education is gonna look like in the future, at least for the kiddies. So um, let's bring on Monty Skull. She is a dear friend of mine. I actually met her six years ago. She was so sweet enough to hold an olive branch out when Julia passed. We were looking for a way to create a foundation to continue to contribute to Lyme research, to all the things going on in the Lyme industry at the time. And we searched far, wide and far to find actually Monty and her group because it was considered and still is the sort of the gold standard in, in terms of Lyme awareness, the associations pulling all the legislation together, it's really no small feat. And it takes an organizational person like Monty and her husband, Jean, to pull this all together. So let's bring Monty Skull onto the, onto the Healthy Hotline. Monty, welcome to our Lyme Awareness Campaign. Thank you, Robbie. It's a pleasure to be here today. I think this is a truly wonderful project that you're doing, and we're so glad to be a part of it. Well, thank, um, you. thank you for being here. Why don't you spend a couple of minutes and just kind of walk us back and move forward to, you know, why you got started in this whole thing, this Lyme industry. I know, I think it's at least two decades or maybe more by now. Um, why did you get started and sort of give us a quick, you know, walk through to the things you're focusing on today? Well, Robbie, I guess you could say that I was bitten back in, um, 2090, I mean, excuse me, uh, 1990. And at the time, there wasn't very uh, much known about Lyme and tick-borne diseases. And I remember having the bullseye rash. I remember doing everything that I was supposed to about going to the doctor after a month when I got sick and the rash spread and, uh, you know, I got all the symptoms. And I actually went to a dermatologist and was told he didn't know what that rash was. And he didn't know why those symptoms I was having uh, would be connected to the rash anyway. And he told me to go home. It would certainly pass in the next couple of weeks. So like so many Lyme patients out there, I started on this journey. And it took me uh, in so many directions. And Around about 2001, we decided to create an organization and it was called the National Capital Lyme Disease Association. So we are actually 20 years out in existence and have been offering support and education to patients and their family members for all that time. Um, but like anything that starts off small, it grows big and expands and we ended up finding that in order to make a difference, not only did we need to offer support, we got involved in education, legislation, and raising money for research. So we've been doing that all these years with many, many different projects from briefings on Capitol Hill to creating and passing bills that help patients in both Maryland and Virginia. And the bills that we actually created were passed in other states. So uh, we, we just, we never cease to come up with ideas. And we get our ideas from the patients. And you see behind me the voice for Lyme. That your on top of the voice is very important to us 
because that is who we respond to. We respond to patients. We have a hotline that's open almost 24 hours a day and we talk to patients. We don't just refer them out, we talk to them. And so a lot of their needs and what they're going through um, comes through in the projects that we get involved in. And so today I am going to talk to you about, I think a very important project that we're gonna be moving into um, in the next week or two and all through the summer actually. And we want our community involved in it too. Perfect. So that well, is why we call ourselves your voice for Lyme. Wow, amazing. Well, before we jump into that, let me just tell everybody out there that might've just tuned in now, how they can find you and find the organization. So because it's got a long name, we shortened it to make it easy for people to type it in. So netcaplime.org is the website, which maybe with a little luck and some ingenuity, because everybody knows I'm a little bit uh, handicapped when it comes to technology sometimes. And the other side is uh, they can reach you by an email, which is natcaplime at natcaplime.org. Also, now we mentioned the hotline. Is that different than the 703 number? Is that a different number that people call it's for that? It's 703-821-8833. Okay, so that's the number I was going to announce. So that's another way to get to you, know, to you, your husband, your services, to get a voice to just have someone on the other end of the phone that has gone through the journey like you guys have. But really more importantly, you're on the front line and in many other ways, because as you know, for people that don't understand, there are lots of different ways that money is raised for research and development. And the big ones for the last 30 or 40 years, maybe even more has been cancer. And so, you know, when there's more money raised to, for these organizations for research, then guess what? They get to hire the best doctors. And so when you don't get that money, you don't get the best doctors. So you don't get the best research. So we don't make the same kinds of advances as they may have had in other areas. So that's the funding piece is so important. And so it's really great to know that there's guys like you guys, you and your husband, of course, that are out there on the leadership profile that are taking those funds and creating a voice, making sure that we're part of the legislation, making sure that the Lyme uh, community is represented because it's so freaking important for us to get anywhere. So let's go back to, you know, to, you know, where you're at. And also let's start talking about your new program. Well, I'd like to just say two things before we do that, Rob, is that something that a lot of people don't know, our organization is all volunteer. It has no paid employees. And it only operates out of the goodness of uh, people volunteering and people donating to the association. So that is one thing. And then another thing is, I, maybe you don't know this, um, that we do work with doctors also besides patients. In other words, uh, we offer um, representation to doctors um, that are, you know, unfortunately under the gun or, or being investigated or have to go up for hearings. Um, in fact, we have a legal team that presents every year at the ILADS Association, wherever they hold their conference. And um, it's made up of three attorneys and they're on the front lines of protecting these doctors. So wow. uh, we, we wow. get involved in that. Uh -huh. That's so important. Yeah, you know. Very important. Many, many of my patients don't understand. I mean, now things are a little bit more progressed, but 10, 15 years ago, a lot of these doctors put their licenses at risk because they were trying to do the best for the patient. And unfortunately, sometimes that falls outside the envelope of some of the things that they're uh, allowed to do based on certain registrations. And so that's where these representations are so important because the doctors have been kind of put into a funny spot where they want to help the patient, but then in doing so, they may be on the fringe of of some of the legalities. So having an organization like you to know that there's one out there that they can actually see, seek help, maybe advice before they start their protocols, or whatever they're looking to do. And, or if they do get in a little pickle, they can come to you guys and, and get some extra services. That's awesome. And unfortunately, uh, Rob, it's still going on today. Um, you know, we just finished a case 
last uh, last fall uh, with a doctor here in Virginia. So um, it hasn't stopped. And um, the, these attorneys actually advise doctors how to best protect their practices. So uh, that, that, that's important. really important. Super important. Okay, so man, this is so exciting, like what you've been doing, but as exciting as everything you've done, I, I almost want to feel like it's like your last opus or like the crescendo of things that you're doing from an education point of view. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the new program that you're bringing out. And uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to share our screen now. So you're going to see, let me tell me if if this is working on your end, okay? Okay. I think I got it right, but let's just make sure. So you should see my full screen now, which is basically bringing up um, your website. Is that correct? Yes, it's there, Rob, it's there. Okay. Um, Before we jump to the, the program that, that we're talking about, let's just go to your main website, right? Mm -hmm. And so for the people that haven't seen your site before, Wow, look at the colors, the use of colors. Wow, the, your use of blues is stunning. I know. Well, we had so, a little talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so so let's um, to walk us through the site and some of the little tabs here, or things that you feel are important. Well, there. okay, uh, if you open our role in impact, of course, so that shows you, uh, you that uh, our board, and we also, if you go down to legislative activities, uh, that link, <laughs> That again, legislative activities. Uh huh. Okay. You can see the many different legislative bills we've been involved uh, in since. Uh, that's you right there, right? That's me in the middle. Awesome. Uh, that's Leslie Fine, a doctor from New Jersey, on the other side of me, and that's Karen Forstner from the original Lyme Disease Foundation, uh, the first uh, Lyme organization that I'm aware of, patient advocacy organization uh, in the country. Uh, she goes back to the late 80s, mid 80s. Wow. And uh, that was a lobbyist on the other side, Mary Halinski, who unfortunately is no longer with us. She's passed on. And so that was uh, a few years ago that picture was taken. Yeah. Uh -huh. We all know that building in the back room, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and then we have the support groups here. So, yes. Because now, you're in your Maryland base. They're, you're, yes. And I, I will say that, you know, uh, over the years we have, this has been our number one um, focus has been on support because we feel it is extremely important to be there for the patients. And um, we, we love the Zoom uh, ability because we can bring people in from all over. And that's what's happening now. They're coming from other states into our support groups uh, to, to benefit from the support. So, but we only have those those locations up there, but you can okay. get on in any meeting. And, and also you're looking to expand chapters into different states. Yes. Before, so this is all part of it. And right. then you've got, looks like here, we just have a whole educational piece, right? Yes, that's the educational piece. Really nice. I'm going to skip over the next tab because we're going to come to that and spend a lot of time and there. And prevention. Right. If so that's really them. good. The testing and how to safely remove the tick and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then these are various different awards and grants that you've gotten over the years. Yeah. No, these are actually grants that we have given to others oh, over the years. I see. Wow. When I say we raise money for research, we do. And it all goes right out the door to... Uh, and, and they don't necessarily have to be big grants, but they're, we, we want to help people with their projects. So we have a little bit of everything in there. Very we've, nice. we've done a lot of work with uh, Old Dominion University in particular um, in the state of Virginia, um, funding their tick drags and you know what's in those ticks. So, yeah. but anyway, and, and supporting, we support ILADS by the way, in education every year. Uh, we will uh, educate uh, new physicians and by that give them scholarships 
to uh, their conference. And we mainly look at the fundamental course because that is for physicians who are not necessarily Lyme treating physicians, but are interested in becoming educated about Lyme. And we think that's extremely important. So we fund that every single year. And one year we funded 50 scholarships, which if you do them at $480 a pop a scholarship, it does add up. So yeah, 20 grand or more, you know, that's that, amazing. That's why I'm coming back to the whole idea that we feel education is your best defense against Lyme and tick-borne diseases. We want to educate the docs. Sure, and Lord only knows that we need more Lyme literate doctors out there, right? right. That's so true. Sure. Okay. And then I guess here is the ways that people can help yes. support your your whole you know your whole system and you know what you created your infrastructure. Right. So that's cool. And so many Lyme patients, I mean, we coach, have coached thousands and thousands over the years through Therisage. And um, one thing I, I, I always say to them, look, I'll spend as much time as you need to help you to get healthy. Um, the only thing I ask in return is that you just help a friend out. And so really what you're doing is the same thing. Let's, you know, con contribute our time. And this is a perfect way. Like if you can't help a friend, then contact NatCap Lyme and see what you can do to help them in what they're doing, you know, in terms of needing extra help, support. It's not oh, always about money. It could just be influencing people that you know in your community and so forth. You know, if you go to our Facebook, you will see we have up there, it's a standard a post. Um, if we need volunteers. We're always asking for volunteers. So if anybody ever wants to, has time that wants to, work in different areas of, of whether it be legislation or you know support groups working with uh, patients uh, you know writing communication any of that uh, we're we're right here waiting for you wow amazing so look you, guys, you know if you're feeling like you don't have a voice here is Monty's skull to tell you that you do and if you're lacking or need to fill some space and make a contribution, here is the place to go. You, you know, we feel you shouldn't feel apathetic like you're just stuck and you have no voice when you have a group and that Monty has spent so much time, her and her husband, putting this together, creating that infrastructure for all of you to basically utilize to help bring awareness, raise awareness to the problems out there. And Robbie, you know, uh, so many people call us and, and they're really, uh, I won't say they're desperate, but they've tried many different things. And, you know, they're very, um, how can I put, they're disillusioned. And so we try to create in them the, the need that they can still do things. They can still contribute. And so um, we think that's extremely important to recovery, to be active and to be able to feel like you can help others. And so... That is in the next, in the program we're going to talk about, I'm going to make that very clear how they can do it. But sure. everybody can contribute. Everybody can be a part of the process. Wow. And, you know, as a teacher, um, you all, I used to teach for many, many years when I was a young woman. And I always thought the product was the most important thing, but it's the process. And that's why um, I keep telling people, you can become a part of the process. And that's, that's the real beauty of, of, you know, being a volunteer. Wow. You know, that's so cool. It's the process. How simple. It is the process. It. Okay, man, I can't wait anymore. So I'm just jumping right in. This is the crescendo of all crescendos. So Monty, let's spend the rest of our time together today okay. talking about your new program and like, Man, I'm so excited. It's like the sneak preview of all previews. So I'm going to click on the tab. This is, again, you can get this on her website. And the program is just about to be launched. So check out the name, Tick Busters. Is that crazy or what? It's, yeah, we've got the trademark on it, Robbie. <laughs> amazing, amazing. All right, so walk us through this program and tell well, all the ins and outs and why it's so exciting and why your passion is here and how you came to even thinking about, you know, starting at this point makes sense to me, but everybody out there wants to know why. So let us know. The reason this 
project was so important to us is because we've lost children here in Virginia and Maryland over the years. And um, we lost a young man. He committed uh, suicide and um, his name was Joey. And we wanted to do something in his memory. And so we came up with what would Joey really appreciate more than anything else. And Joey was the kind of young man who wanted to help others. He was a good, good person. And so we said, if, if Joey's legacy could be left to help educate children about tick-borne diseases, be aware of them, then what a wonderful thing to do for his family. And so we started on this project called Tick Busters and we wrote a storybook and we had on our committee about, um, oh, about six people and most of them were teachers, parents and uh, a few advocates. But we started to build a story. And if you move it on up a little bit, um, move the Ticula was the character. And because we found that in the age group, kindergarten through sixth grade, kids really start to like gory stuff. And so rather than just do another walk through the woods storybook, we said, we want something that will grab them and uh, that they really can uh, have fun with. And so we came up with Ticula, Wanted Dead or Alive. And this whole series is, uh, you know, children are, I think it's 30% is the stat that's always used to say that they are the demographic that is really affected more than any other when it comes to Lyme and tick-borne diseases. And so we noticed that there wasn't really a lot of education out there in the school systems to to make children aware, especially at this age group, when they're out on the playgrounds, they're out there playing soccer, they're out there playing baseball, that, hey, you need to check yourself when you come in and be aware that ticks can get on you when you're outdoors. And now with everybody out there camping, I mean, this is what all the young families do, you know, they, uh, because of the COVID, they do a lot of camping on weekends. And so we felt this was really, really important. And as you can see, we have education is your best defense against kid, ticks and the diseases they carry. And that's extremely important. So we came up, first of all, with the booklet. And it's a wonderful story booklet and the children love it. We've tested it on many children and um, the results are all really good. And then we went into, you wanna scroll on down a little bit here on this site, education, awareness and prevention. And um, this, this is basically explaining why we did the booklet and, and why it's really important to be aware of Lyme and tick-borne diseases. And then if you- You don't have to jump onto each of these tabs. Yeah. People that just tuned in, we're talking to Monty Skull, the executive director of NatCap Lyme. You can get her hotline number, 703-821-8833. And she's walking us through a new program that's just about to be released. Um, that's an education program, mostly for young kids. And it kind of makes sense because they're out there playing in the- in the fields, they're camping, like you said, with families. Um, a couple of things. One, they could get, they could contract or become affected themselves. And more importantly, you know, they, they have their friends too, and they can notice it on their friends and they can share this information. And what a better way to educate the community at large, because they grow up, they tell their kids, everybody just becomes more aware of the challenges with tick-borne diseases and particularly Lyme. So this is way, way super important. And okay. Ravi, it's the old philosophy. You educate from the bottom up as well as the top down. And I have found when I was teaching many, many years ago that children are the best teachers, uh, especially to their parents. They have a captive okay. audience. When, when that little one comes home at the end of the day and dad says, what did you learn in school today? And they'll say, sit down, dad, we want to tell you about ticks and what they can do and, and how to prevent getting them on you. I mean, oh, those yeah. parents listen. Love so them. that's, that's another uh, uh, focus of this program. It teaches the adults as well as the parents. And then uh, if you scroll on down, uh, this is a poem that 
starts the booklet off winter spring summer fall and every season ticks are on the crawl joey and his friends are on the ball searching for ticula the scariest of all so pay attention because the story is about prevention join joey and his pals as they mention one wicked tick who deserves detention now you know, I should explain here that Tick Busters is really a fun-filled children's fantasy mystery story that tells the tale of a menacing tick, Ticula, who is on the loose and causing havoc. Through the story, the reader learns about ticks, their habitat, their life cycle, the diseases they carry, and how to properly remove them and what to do after they are removed. So this is what a child comes away with. And this is what he teaches another child or he teaches his parent. And um, so that's sort of what the story booklet does. Now let's move on to the video. So you've used the, um, you've used the avatar of Ticula to walk everybody through this story. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Now, we also said in the, in the time of COVID, when, you know, everything was being done online for teaching, now we know that schools are going to open up again, but we thought a, a, a video would be really important to get the message across. And so we actually got a wonderful storyteller. He's a national storyteller out of California to do the booklet for us. And this this video has animation in it. It has uh, him telling the story and it has a lot of information that children love. So we have that up there and it's available. You know, you can down, download it and watch it. And by the way, the booklet actually flips. It's a flip booklet. So you can go through the whole booklet. Okay, so this, you keep mentioning the booklet. So it's part of a kit. So explain yeah. to everybody kind of like, well, I guess we'll get to that in a few we're, minutes. We're coming to that next. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to continue down the screen here. Right. And this is a little bit of what's in the booklet. And we call it, um, there's a Tick Busters series. And that is made up of, um, first of all, the booklet, the story booklet, a coloring booklet, uh, an informational children's brochure, a rack card for libraries, and a tick identification card and membership card, and also a fun uh, washable tattoo that they can put on their arm or their leg, wherever they want it. <laughs> great, that's great. That, that's you can the, see that bundle here, right? If you click on the bundle. Uh -huh, or you keep going down. You can do it either way. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, there's, here comes the bundle, uh -oh, okay? Look at that, and you've got the marquee so people can scroll along and they can yes. see all. The and there's the coloring book. And it's, it's done off of the booklet, of course, and then children's brochure. There's the rack card for the libraries. It's all the same thing. And there's the tick identification uh, card for children. And there's your tattoo. Nice. And wow. there's the booklet. Look how beautifully done that is. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, they did a nice job. No, you did a nice job. It takes a good director to get all the stuff to put together. I'm sure it's been many, many months of long hours of putting this together, no doubt. We, we worked a, about a year and a half on this project. Here we go, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going, right? And now, now the Tick Busters box is something else that we feel is really important because this is for the classroom. This is for a camp, uh, camp class. And uh, it has something like 180 pieces. We, we did it based on 30, 30 children because we felt that was the average of a classroom. And see, a teacher can actually take this. And do, this comes with a lesson plan, by the way, Robbie. Um, and use the lesson plan, teach it, or she can use the video to teach it. So um, it's really all the work is done for the teacher. Amazing. So, and look at these prices, it's crazy. How can you even afford this? This looks like well, your cost, your cost our, to put this together. Listen, our, our purpose is not to make money. Our purpose is to promote education. And because we feel that's how things are gonna change when enough people are educated about this disease and the need for the kind of research that uh, we haven't gotten up until now to find what will help people uh, mainly get a cure for this disease if it's possible. But 
the bundle with all the pieces, the six pieces is $5 and that's at our cost and that's including your shipping. And believe me, it is expensive to make quality literature like this. And so um, that is absolute cost. The Tick Buster box, that's another one to send it to you. It costs us uh, by priority mail, 1550 in the box. And the rest is all the cost of materials because you're getting 180 pieces. Wow. So, by the way, this is just not for the classroom. It's for civic associations. It's anytime a group gets together that, you know, you have a large amount of people there. Um, this is a perfect way to educate them. No, oh, it's fantastic. I love that. And I can't believe that you can actually do it at this price. So people can just send, if I wanted to send a contribution so that I could fund like a box or two boxes to be sent to a school or classrooms and so forth, I could just contact you, we order them, yes. you send them out. And then I know that I'm making my contribution to elevate education, at least to one or two public schools or as many as you can you can send them to, right? Right, right. let's say somebody wanted, um, and I've got a picture here, but I know you can't see it, that they've already done it because we started with something called Little Free Libraries, but uh, I don't know if you can see this picture, yeah, but here see. you've got a, yo a, a young child, she's actually reading the story to her classmates, uh, wow. the story booklet. And so let's say a parent wanted to uh, have this for her child's class if she lets us know where to send it to that teacher, to that school, we can just go ahead and send it to them, you know, as long as they made possible the way to get it there for them. Wow. Through funding it. This is amazing. I, you know, Monty, we talked about this before, but you hadn't had the site up yet. So this is brand new. I mean, we're talking just days ago. Feels like the ink hasn't even dried on the screen yet. That's how new this is. Yes, I know. Uh, well, it just went, it just went live last night. To be quite wow. honest, look, yeah. look at that! Holy mackerel! Uh huh. <laughs> okay, so we can join. We can join your group. We can join Nat Cap Lime Org. I mean, there's just so many ways that we can all participate in giving back, and it's not just about money. It could just be about your skills. It could be about your time. It could be about just introducing this whole profile to someone that you know that will help moving the ball a little bit further down the field. Monty, this is really amazing. And I can't believe how you've just kind of caught every angle. And I just love the fact that you are really starting at the ground level with the kids and educating them and doing it on their level. You're like getting your nose right to the ground. So you're not coming from the you know, authoritative spot, you're That's picking right. up icons, you're using colors that are going to be attractive. It's going to be fun for kids to learn. And they're so anxious to get back into school now. So your timing is so perfect in bringing it out at this point. You know, Robbie, let me throw this in there too. You know, for a couple of years, and I don't want to name what uh, school system it is, but it's a pretty big one around here. And we tried to get some sort of program in to um, really educate kids. And we actually went ahead and financed a, a curriculum to do that kindergarten through 12th grade. And that was a massive effort. But um, we learned very quickly, there's so much red tape trying to get into school systems that we just felt now this is where the parent can really help. And the parent can ask their teacher to teach it. And then, then it can be gotten out there, the information. This one school system I'm talking about, they only had two items that they addressed, uh, health items with children. One was obesity and the other was bullying. And as much as we tried to convince them, if you have these children out on the playground and doing all their sports, their competitive sports and everything. Else. Why wouldn't you want some sort of program to educate them? And so we finally, out of frustration, just decided to try to go ahead and let our community play the big part in this and get it rolling. And there's two other parts to this that I haven't talked about, and I know our time is short. One is the free, the free little libraries, and, and that'll be coming out. We don't have it here to show you all, but uh, you can participate in that. And these are 
something like over, I think it's 100,000 little libraries all over the country that are in your neighborhood and you don't even know it. And people take books there and put these books to share with their neighbors. So we've donated 5,000 of these uh, story booklets to, to, to that effort. And people have started to go out and put the, the, the booklets in their little libraries in their neighborhoods. So just another way of educating. And, um, and then also we're going to be introducing an education bill in Virginia and probably Maryland um, that will be promoting education on Lyme and tick-borne diseases in the school systems throughout the state and the libraries. So we're doing everything we can to get the word out. And uh, so I just, hopefully- I hear, I hear what you're saying and I understand the politics and it just takes so long to get it through, push through, almost like, like you've been trying through the front door, but using the back door through the kids is amazing and the families because the PTA is when all these associations get together and they start talking about it, there's gonna be more interest and more interest. And now yeah. by creating a box and a package and a, and a sort of completely, um, you know, from soup to nuts, you've really covered all the bases and a delivery system to bring it to the classroom, uh, it seems like you're just making it so easy. And hopefully this with a little bit of gumption and a little bit of effort, some, some good energy, which I know the community that's listening today, they've got all the energy in the world to make this happen. So let's, get, let's join together and, uh, and help you with your process here um, because it's, this is so important. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. And um, I hope everybody wants to play their part and makes a difference in their community. And you can do it. You really can. We've seen it happen many, many times uh, over the years. And you're, you're an integral part of this process. <laughs> Remember, it's the process, not the product. <laughs> Auntie Saul, it's the process, not the product woman. I really appreciate your time today. This is amazing news. I'm, you know, very honored that you basically announced the program almost on our show. Yes. Um, and everybody can tune in uh, the Lyme Awareness 2021 program on the Healthy Hotline YouTube channel is going to be there for per perpetuity, so people can review this forever and ever. Um, and download it, tell their friends about it. So we're so happy that you came on, had the time to spend time with us today. You're amazing. Your, your, your energy through this program into the community is unwavering. And it's so important that we have more leaders and pioneers like you out there that are just willing to spend the time and care. So Monty, again, you and your husband, thank you so much for everything you've done to date and the things you will be doing, certainly this program. And uh, we'll learn more about Tick Busters and that, how exciting the program will be in the future. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Robbie. Hey everybody, it's Robbie Bessner. Thanks so much for joining us today. Please share this content with anyone that you think might benefit from it. And we're looking forward to having you with us tomorrow for another great interview.